There's a lot we have to do here. There's a lot to discover. Yeah. Um, another question. Why do we start uh, with the discussion of the beginning of human history with the study of the Old and New Stone Age? Is this the time period and place where the first human being on the came mm -hmm. to be? Well, um, this is the first thing that we know about human beings. And, um, you know, we have a lot of evidence that it was there. And presumably this would be, I mean, the thing is, is that, you see, people in this period were people who probably lived the way that Adamic people were believed to live. That they lived naturally in the world. Um, you know, they made everything they needed. They did not produce cities. They did not produce wealth. They were not interested in gold and silver. And they were not interested in art and things like that. They worshipped God. They believed in God. Okay? So, uh, to say it's an old stone age, and again, it's like even the word, like, why do you have to use that word? See, like, when we talk about primitive, uh, we talk about cognitive frames, this is one, one, one of the ones I want to talk about. The word primitive. You know, that is a cognitive frame, right? When you hear the word primitive, primitive religion, what do you think of? Backward. What does the word primitive mean linguistically? Sorry? No, linguistically it doesn't. In a semantically, what does it mean? First. First. That's all it means. Primitive, pertaining to the first. So why don't, if we say primitive, we understand prime, you know, or primary, or principle. But you see, this is, again, Darwinian notions of evolution. Things are really rudimentary, backward, stupid. And then we say, then the first people must have been that way. So they have to be primitive. If they're the first people, they couldn't have done anything. So the, 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 we don't buy into that cognitive frame. And that's why Toynbee says the so-called primitive people of the Paleolithic, he said, I don't believe they were that way at all. I believe they were the most spiritual of all human beings. You know, the Muqarrabin, the Sabiqin. Many of the first generations and a few of the later ones. We're the later ones. See, so, so when we look at this from our standpoint, and we look at it also from the standpoint of certain informed historians, then we get a different view. There's a German who studied primitive religion. It's the best study of primitive religion. His name is Wilhelm Schmidt, and I had a whole slide about him, but I must have deleted it. By mistake. But Wilhelm Schmidt, he writes a book, it's in German, it's called Der Ursprung, Ursprung der Gottesidee. It is the origin of the idea of God. It's about 12 volumes, <laughs> yeah, and never translated into English. And even Germans have a hard time reading it. That's his life's work. And he collects careful anthropological information himself and through others, mostly through others about all primitive people in the world and what they believe about God. So he calls it the origin of the idea of God. And first of all, what is a primitive person? Well, the definition of primitive people in the world today is better expressed as micro-societies or kinship societies, because that's all they are. You see, they, they are societies in which you don't have a government. You don't have kings. You don't have administrations. You know, everybody is who they are because of their kinship. So the head may be the elder, the oldest man. Okay, and um, then, you know, you will stand by me because you're my brother, you're my cousin. These are primitive societies, and they usually tend to be small. Although Arabia was a primitive society in that way. It had just kinship groups. It didn't have governance, and it was not backward in any way. They were honorable people with an incredible language. Okay, and um, in primitive societies, though today, there are little isolated societies because that's, you know, kinship groups are protected that way. You have them in certain parts of America, Africa, Asia, Siberia, and so forth. And so he studied all of these little micro societies. And again, are they older than we are? If I go today to the Tierra del Fuego in the very south of America and I see these three tribes that are there that are primitive, 
Uh, aren't they living in 2013 today? Or is it 2013 BC? Did we take a time machine there or an airplane? We didn't go there by time machine. We then went there in 2013. But we assume that they preserve certain elements of the past. It's just a presumption. And then that becomes a valuable presumption if we look at all micro-societies and compare them and see what they have in common. Mm -hmm. And when we look at them and we see what they have in common, we find that all of them believe in one God. All of them. Again, what was the narrative you may have heard? That no, they were animists. Because the idea of one God had to be evolutionary. And like the Jews must have developed this, they evolved this idea. No, absolutely not. The Bible doesn't say that, and history doesn't say that. See, and then the early people, they had to worship spirits. They said there were spirits in the trees and spirits in the water. And then they sort of get smarter and they say, well, like, hey, that's just a tree. So let's look at the spirit out of the tree. Then they worship the spirits. And then they say, like, wouldn't it be better to have gods? And then we have families. And then what about just one God? Isn't that a better idea? You know, that's absolutely false. You know, the, the primitive religions all believe in the one God, wherever you find them. Wilhelm Schmidt will give you the names of the God. And they usually believe that God is good, and they believe they always believe God is good. They believe that he is the source of morality. They have marriage, and they believe that marriage is sacred because of God. They believe that adultery is evil. There are very few exceptions to that. Okay? And, um, you know, so this is very valuable. And this is one of the things that Toynbee depends on. Then he said there must, and this is what Schmidt says, he said there must be ancient prophecy. How do people know these things? We could say, well, there could be 